Hi guys and welcome back to the official Doctor Who podcast. I'm Shabazz. And I am Nadia J and we are here for all your Doctor Who needs. Okay, as per usual, spoiler alert. If you have not seen Rogue, go and do so right now. BBC iPlayer in the UK or Disney Plus where available and then come right back here so we can discuss this episode. Very much looking forward to it. But first, we need some guests. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, hey. 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 Not just one lovely lady, but two. Mm-hmm. Let's give it up for Radio 1 presenter, Lauren Layfield. Yeah. Thanks, guys. And Who Tucker and cosplayer, Ellie Jolly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Thank you. Welcome both. How are Thanks. you? Thanks. Really good. good. Really good excited job. to be here. All right. So I've got to ask you both. Actually, I'll start with you, Lauren. Mm-hmm. What's like your favourite episode so far this series? I would say... I like, I think, the ones that are a bit more dystopian. Yeah. A bit more like the near future. Mm. Things that feel very real. Amazing. What about you, Ellie? What about your relationship with Doctor Who? Lifelong fan. Yay. Um, I grew up watching it with my dad every week. Sorry, um, does everyone just watch it with their dad? Yeah. <laughs> the in the room. There's a lot yeah. of like boomer age dads that grew up in that sort of era. Yeah. So they're now passing it down onto the children, me. Um, so I'm so happy with the new series so far. I love it. Love that. Do you have a favourite episode? Journey's End. That's my era yeah. of the Doctor. That it's is like my favourite. It's like all the best companions in the same room. Mm. Chef's kiss. Right, I've got to ask you guys, what are you looking forward to talking about this episode? Ellie? I'm a natural born theoriser. I love, I'm I'm connecting the dots already. Oh, I'm really it. excited to predict what's coming next and what the overarching story is going to lead to and all that kind of thing. What about you, Lauren? I'm kind of interested, the Bridgerton-esque feel of this episode. Mm-hmm. Obviously, aside from Doctor Who, what's the biggest thing that's been out recently? Bridgerton, yeah. it feels like this monumental crossover. And yeah, it was, it was really, really good. All right, so we're going to talk about all those things you guys mentioned. Plus, we've got some things on the list to get through. Um, we're also going to discuss Indira Varma, who is playing the shape-shifting Childer. We've got massive Bridgerton vibes. Huge. Also, Jonathan Groff playing Rogue. The marriage proposal. Oh Yeah, of course, that was a big deal. Plus, guys, we have another collection of tantalising breadcrumbs from Russell T Davis, but this is the penultimate episode. Oh. I can't even breathe. The Legend of Ruby Sunday. We have a clip to show you very, very shortly, guys. It's so exciting. Ooh, I'm so hyped. So Are you guys hyped. all right? Are you okay? Not You're really. all huffing and puffing. Mm, frothing at the mouth. <laughs> 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 but first things first, let's talk about Rogue and let's talk about the Bridgerton vibe setting. Let's remind ourselves of that. Oh my, Bridgerton! Oh, this is my actual dream. It's brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> and the dances. Oh, oh, we're going to dance I can't dance. Not like this. I don't know these moves. Psychic earrings. Choreography beamed into your motor system. Tap twice to choose your moves. It's like instant strictly. <sighs> what did you think? What did you make of this episode? I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. Like, as a fan of Bridgerton anyway, I loved it. But also, I just thought it was like a really, like, clever sort of spin on it. Mm. I think it touches on something we all are aware of and we all know. So it feels like it's kind of taken Bridgerton a bit in a a sci-fi direction, basically, which is two things that would just never, you would never think to cross, would you? It was genius. What if they already are? What if the Bridgerton you're watching... The finale, Go away. they're all aliens. That would, that would spin people out, wouldn't mm-hmm. it? I just love seeing the Doctor in different outfits and the Regency wear, yeah. stunning, and how the earrings brought into it with the dancing. Love it. The episode was actually written by a comedian. She goes by the name of Bryony Redman and also written by Kate Heron. Now, she is the former showrunner for Loki. Don't know if anyone watched it, but... Yeah. Obsessed. Oh, loved. loved it. So we had those, like, sci-fi moments, really great comedic moments as well. Really enjoyed the little dance between the rogue and the doctor. That, that was so, like... The way it was written, they were just kind of bouncing off each other, these little, like, kind of one-liners. Yes. Yeah. And... There was kind of that tension between them where you were like, yeah. do they like each other? Is he going to do yeah. away with the doctor? But then there was that kind of flirty kind of like banter between them. And it was just funny. It was just yeah. good to watch. Yeah. So quick. So also there's Susan Twist. But you know what? Actually, I'm going to let you lead on this because this is your egg. I was going to say, your I, baby. listen, I Who love Who is Susan Twist? Right. Yeah. All I keep hearing is Susan Twist, Susan Twist, so, that's Susan Twist. She obviously appeared in this episode again. Let's just remind ourselves of that. Oh, uh, your grace. Who is that? The Duke's late mother. Her eyes still follow me about the room. Constant judgment. Right, listen, it's blowing my mind because she's obviously, as we now know, we talk about it every week, she's appeared in various different episodes in various different forms. So what I really want to know is, we've talked about it a lot, 
What's your guys' theory? Ellie, what's your theory? What What's Susan Twist? I, I I have a few. I've got a few ideas. Go on. I'm thinking about what other powerful women that we've seen in Doctor Who and who that it could be, like loose threads from the past. I'm think, thinking people like the Rani, mm-hmm. um, which was one of the Doctor's old enemies and yeah. friends. And uh, It could be something to do with the Doctor's granddaughter. Yeah. Could end up being his great-granddaughter at this point or mm-hmm. something like that because I know we've had a lot of themes about family in this mm. series and, and finding her yeah. birth mon- mother and um, adoption and all that. So it could be something to do with the Doctor's family. I know at some point Ruby's going back in the past and lifting that hood up, right? Like she's mm. going to grab that hood and take it off and yeah. be like, who are you, mother? We're so deep into the theories about Ruby's background and, and the fact that the Doctor's already said, well, I can't take you back to that place and mm. show you what happened at the church. Yeah. So we already know, we already like have this big bit that's being kept from us. So my only thought is, is there a link back to that moment? Ooh. Is there something there? I that? think Susan Twist is a, almost playing a companion in this. I think she knows who Ruby's mum is. I don't think she is Ruby's mum. She's not. I think, no, no, no. I think she is there to almost help Ruby to decipher who her mum is because her interactions with Ruby are very obvious. Like it's always Ruby that has to see her. Doesn't mean the doctor Mm. doesn't as well, but it's almost like a, hey, it's me. The thing is the fact that she's playing so many different characters. My theory and has always been, and I thought we're going to touch on this was, I feel like the character themselves doesn't know that they are a different, they're the same yeah, person. Yes. It's appearing to Ruby, which is why it leans into this idea that when that hood comes off, her mum looks like that. Because she would, Ruby would have had a glimpse of her mum. Obviously, she was a baby, but she still would have seen it with mm. her eyes. Mm. I feel like she keeps seeing this face. That's why the rest of the characters are all like, yeah, that's my mum. No, that's that, That's the, the, the Duke's mum. Yeah. That's uh, the video log. But everybody else is acting like, what are you on about? As well as you say, like, you don't know, you don't think she knows who she is mm. um, in the same way that we saw the master and bo- both the master and the doctor have done this um, yeah. where they've erased their entire personality and put it in that pocket watch. So if it's somebody like the Rani, for example, mm-hmm. they could have used that same technology and completely forgotten who they were. That whole 73 hours episode as well was her being followed by this presence and her kind of trying to work out who it was and what relevance it has. So it feels like there's some kind of echo to that. Part of me thinks maybe that maybe that wasn't a closed episode and maybe there's that's an expansion what, yeah. of that episode that we don't know about yet. That's exactly what Nadia said, what said from day yeah. one. She Did watched she that episode. Yes. We are right here. There Amazing. is something, but I genuinely think that Susan Twist is kind of an accessory. I don't think she's as obvious as being Ruby's mum. Yeah, it's got, it's got to be like a, hey, I'm here because you need me to be here. Like, I don't want to say guardian angel because that's not what I'm trying to say, but, but she is assisting. Yeah, she's a facilitator. Yeah. And I think that somehow, well, we're going to find out anyway, um, Next week. Ruby's going to work out why Susan keeps appearing and why she keeps seeing her. So listen, let's talk about the big baddie of this episode, the Childers. Let's just remind ourselves of them. We're the Childers family. I want to be the doctor. Who wants to fight for the other one? Run. I'm normally the one that says that. What did you think of the uh, Childers then? What's your I loved take? them. I It really reminded me of, I'm going to go back to the Slitheen again oh, for you here. On, it reminded me of them because they were just really silly and goofy and they'd say like a quick quippy line before stealing someone else's body, which is and what we see here. literally murdering yeah, yeah, yeah. someone. They're like, they're like little... just say something sassy and then... <laughs> when she's working as a maid and she goes to the Duchess... In that dress. <laughs> and the Duchess like, oh, Yeah, they're much. sassy. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I really um, enjoyed just the beginning, Dear Obama. She was doing those kind of like head twitches. And I was like, oh, what's this about? Like, mm. is this like some kind of weird alien thing yeah. that's going on? And then when, like, they in that clip, you see them sort of come to fruition, you're like, mm. oh, it's that like bird element. She mm. just played it so well. Didn't she is she? brilliant. She is a brilliant actress as well. She played Susie Costello yeah. in the Torchwood spin offs. Um, and she's just brilliant as the leader. Mm. And those funny lines that we were talking about earlier as well, they were just written into those moments so nicely yeah. that they become this kind of endearing, yeah. you know, and you want to see what they're going to do next. Right, let's talk about the chemistry between the Doctor and Rogue. Let's remind ourselves of that. I didn't know the Duchess who plays the court jester. Well, I'm hilarious. And you're kind of funny, peculiar, standing here. Good vantage point, keeping an eye out on the exits, like you're expecting trouble. 
Are you? Honey, I'm here for fun. Honey, it's I'm very sexy, I'm isn't it? Iconic. The tension there. So what did you make of their relationship, Lauren? At first, I was like, you know, it's that feeling where it's just like, do I like this person or do I hate this mm. person? Are you arrogant or are you confident? It was that kind of thing. Yeah. You, know, you just can't work mm. someone out. And then gradually you just sort of saw the kind of barriers kind of come down and yeah. that bit where he showed him inside the TARDIS and um, he was really impressed with it. It was like, wow, that's amazing. It's but, very Bridgerton. Though, oh, right? I mean, yes, say. absolutely. And that's what you need. If we're going to have a Bridgerton episode, we had to have some kind of like love story yeah. attached to and it. And they usually do hate each other and then all of a sudden it's like the chemistry is there yeah. from nowhere. I love it when the Doctor gets a bit flirty. I mean, if we think about like the 10th Doctor, he was going around snogging everybody. Yeah. So, mm. And like, it reminds me a lot of Astrid from Voyage of the Damned. Yes, yes, um, yes. Where she, I mean, Kylie Minogue was in this episode yes. too, um, which I loved that scene. The rapport between oh, Rogue and the Doctor yeah, there with the, song, with the song. A little bit of cheeky flirting. Um, but where they, they fall in love for this great adventure and then obviously they have to sacri sacrifice themselves at the end of it. I will be honest. He got very distracted. Yeah. He did. Ruby she, was in a pickle. Yeah. For she a could hot have been minute. dead if she didn't save herself, right? What was she and doing? usually he's, you know, spending so much of his time looking out for her. Exactly. Where, right? She he was flirting in his, in, his, in his babe's yeah. ship. Yeah. My point. And that, that smooch distracted him enough to steal the flipping remote thing. Exactly. Mm. My yeah. point. While you're distracted, I'm got the time for it. The, the world right. is at stake. Humanity is at stake. I think the Doctor's romantic moments work best when it's like a, a long building thing, like when we had Rose Tyler Thank and then River yeah. Song. Mm. It needs a bit of time. Yeah, the proposal yeah. was like, whoa, 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 whoa. If that happened on a night out, you'd probably, you would, would probably say no, wouldn't you? Was it real? Was it a bit of drama for the cosplaying shoulder? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I think that the Doctor set it up and then he very, very quickly realised, oh dear, this is getting a bit real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know though. I think maybe, because we were, we were discussing this and I think he put the ring on at the end. Mm. Now, there is uh, conflicting theories. Did he put the ring on to say we're engaged? Because if he did take it off, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm not having it, yeah, yeah. right? Or did he put it on just to sort of say, like, the guy's gone. Like, I'm, this is my promise that I will find you. I, I will save that, you. Yeah. Rather than like, oh, I'm engaged. I, would go I think back. it's just a reminder. Why is there a ring? Yeah, where's this, Where this ring come from? I know, from? I know this. No, I don't know this. <laughs> I'm saying like I know it. Like, I spoke to Russell about it. Basically, what it is, I think the, the ring is, you know, Rogue talked about having a companion. Hmm. And the com or someone like a, a he had someone had someone yes. maybe the ring was oh. oh and then they died or they got lost in some sort of but dimension. Then don't be giving out that I'm ring with you, babe. Nilly. Nilly. No, but right. I think he, he had it in his pocket. Really, nilly. I think but he did he have it in his pocket or was he just wearing a ring? Because the doctor was already already wearing a couple of rings. Keep so it could have just been yourself, part of his yeah. outfit. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's day one. Or at least get past three dates, you know, and then and then get the ring out. So we had the amazing Jonathan Groff starring here as well, yes. alongside the Doctor. Brilliant performance. Yes. I and also nice it. to have the accent. Yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely in love with Jonathan Groff. You said to me, didn't you? Yeah. Absolutely in love with him. <laughs> so I'm a theatre kid. Yeah. So I, I knew him from like, I remember watching the 2007 Tony Awards performance of Spring Awakening with him in it and deciding that I was utterly in love with this man. I still love him. He's but my fave. Did he, um, what did you think of him playing Rogue? Because it's quite a different, quite a different character, isn't it? It's more like yeah. it's giving a Star-Lord energy, very yeah, Marvel, yeah, yeah. very... Uh, very Lone Ranger. Yeah. Very, yeah. very kind of... I felt very complicated. I don't know. Did I just get that? I just I love think a complicated there's, character. I think there's more layers to him than we knew of because mm -hmm. obviously they've left that thread open to explore further, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think he absolutely killed that role, slayed yeah. it. He had to have down. a little element of intrigue as well to kind of get the Doctor's attention yeah. and kind of like, yeah, kind of wrap really him into mean, that world mm. so quickly, like we said as well. And it was it was complicated. And he did it really, really well, didn't he? So we've already mentioned, but Kylie was playing. Mm -hmm. And for those that don't know, obviously Kylie has been in Voyage of the Dam. She played Astrid. I, I think... She's she's well wedged in the Hooniverse now. Mm. I think Kylie as a pop star and then Astrid as a separate entity, as a doppelganger, perhaps. Maybe it's just a nice kudos to Kylie and for previous episodes for like yeah. real Hoovians because she's quoted by the Doctor in The Idiot's Lantern. Mm. Is this just another way to say, look, Flex, you know, we've had Kylie in the show. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I agree with you. I don't think Kylie is. I think Astrid was just someone yeah, who slightly yeah. looked like her. I agree. I don't think there's a, I don't think, yeah. you know. We, also, we, if we're going to have a gay kiss, we want a gay icon. 
in a month that episode yeah. no yeah. like Perfect. a proper queen yeah. so and yeah. I don't think it could have been any other song because nope. I just don't think it would have worked nope. you know just, oh, maybe just, that's just, thrown forward as well I can't get you out of my head maybe he will go forth because he will he not be able to get, get him out of his head because, and try and find so him real. because obviously now we know that uh, Rogue has stepped mm. and gone into a different dimension and he find me. to find him do you think the doctor's going to make good on that or he's just going to forget about it I think he will return to it eventually when <laughs> Eventually, yeah, Eventually. like in a couple of years' time, maybe another yeah. compa- a doctor. It could be a different mm. face by then. You never know. So this could be the beginning of a love story spanning multiple mm. doctors. Do you mm. think Rogue might come back as a companion in like future episodes? Do you think like... No, he's got his own ship. Maybe Do you know what I mean? It's very much Battle of the Boys. Do you know what I mean? I don't <laughs> think... Yeah, would he be willing to sidekick things? I don't no. know. No, because I because if you think about it, when he was like on the TARDIS, he was like... Yeah, because it was clean. He said, I'm in love. Well, yeah, I'm in love. Yeah, he did say that. I you know, think yeah. the doctor likes to be challenged there. Because mm. if you think about all the other people that he sort of ended up companions with and the people that he holds nearest and dearest to him, like think Donna Noble, she challenges oh, him all, uh, all, all the time. The time. Yeah. And he likes that about her. He likes someone that's got the cheek to stand up to him sometimes yeah. and have a bit of banter. So. The audacity of the yeah. whole situation. He's got Ruby for that. Because it takes a certain person to do that to the doctor, you know what I mean? He's used to being in charge of the situation. Also, how cool was it when we got to see all the Doctor's faces? Mm, loved that. Tears including that. Richard E. Grant, which we'll come back to later. But first, I think we want to talk about the props. Oh, I didn't even notice. Oh, it was, oh, right yeah. it was sort of pointing towards me and I wanted to move it to point Push towards you. Yeah, so because I'm scared. So cool. Yeah, I thought it might go off. <laughs> That's awesome. you know I mean? Yeah, I'm glad you pointed it that way. Thank <laughs> you for thinking of me, Shabazz. Um, fantastic props actually used in this episode, mm-hmm. including those fantastic earrings that we were just talking about that Ruby had. Let's remind ourselves of those. That's what she did to me. How could you mistake her for me? She has the scent of a childer. You idiot. It's a false scent from that cheap psychic jewellery. Cheap psychic jewellery, which obviously worked. <laughs> did a job, didn't it? It yeah. did yeah. the job. Might be cheap, but it done a job. And he's got all... TARDIS earrings on. I don't know if those are those yeah, psychic. Yeah, so I have cool. a TARDIS earrings on today. I, know. I love them. have magical properties, they must. <laughs> Do you know I what know. I want to know? We could have done with the psychic earrings a couple of times in uh, a couple of times in Doctor yeah. in the universe we could have done with some of them well what else she can see yeah I think the the gadgets this series have been really cool like but I think the Doctor invents these things and tinkers ah. about with them after something happens like there's a theory mm. with the anti-mavity gloves yes um, where you know because Rose couldn't hold on yeah he oh. invented them after that so oh, that people could hold on so he's inventing stuff so he can avoid situations that he's been in before but, like, these earrings are really cool. Cosplayers are going to love finding them, finding yeah. the props mm-hmm. and recreating them. Now, before we get into those Easter eggs, we have an exclusive sneak peek of the two-part finale, guys. It is such a big one. Ooh. The Legend of Ruby Sunday. That is on its way. Plus, we're talking to Russell T. Davies. He's giving us some breadcrumbs, all of that to come. Super exciting stuff. Right. Do you know what? I'm getting really, really excited because... I'm excited and sad because it's coming to the end, right? Yeah. But my biggest thing is, is I love answers. Yeah. I want to know Susan Twist, right? His legions are coming, the one who waits. I want answers today. Mm. Now, what do you think? How, how are you feeling about the finale? I'm so excited. You've got lots um, of theories, I do. I, I said at the top of the episode that I'm a natural born theoriser. So I've been thinking. Mm-hmm. I've been doing a lot of thinking. Um, I think... As I said before, I think that we could have something to do with the Doctor's family, something to do with that. Mm -hmm. Um, I have no idea what the hell Ruby Sunday could be. Um, She's a mystery to me, but I think the one who waits could be another Celestial. Yeah. Um, Maybe like a reference from Classic Who, maybe from like the John Pertwee era, because I know Shooty's been mentioning him quite a lot. Yes. I was watching Remembrance of the Daleks, which is a Sylvester McCoy story the other day, and I think the hand of Omega could be something okay. important here. There is a, a theory that I've seen as well. And it, yeah, um, this tune that is playing when um, yeah. Ruby is mm-hmm. lifted in the air um, is the same mm-hmm. tune, well, similar notes to um, Trickster to from Trickster. Sarah Jane Adventures. Mm-hmm. And... I do think that there is going to be a big link. Is there a world where the companion 
can not be a companion and can actually be in opposition to I the doctor. I hope so. Thank you, Lauren. Is that a legit because question? I have done bestie. it. I, all I've said from episode one is Ruby is going to be a bad guy. And really? I want it. Feels like really? she's got, like you said, she's got all these things that she's been able to do. Mm-hmm. But like you said, she's never really self-questioning. She just does them and then we move on. And we go, oh, she helps him sort of like basically counterbalance himself on a landmine. Yeah. And she's brave enough to do it. And she goes forth and she just does it. And she's, it's just a bit like, oh, what am I like? I've just done that. But is it? Or is she yeah. helping as a part of a greater plot. We could do this all afternoon. Yeah. Like, yeah. I absolutely <laughs> love going back and forth with everybody about theories and you yeah. guys can get involved as well. Make sure you use the hashtag Doctor Who so we can find your theories and maybe they'll get said on the podcast. Yes. Mm. All right, are we ready? Shabazz has got his moment. This is Doctor Dot. So this is the part of the episode where Shabazz gets all those Easter eggs and does his Doctor Dot and we love it here because it's his, his real time to flex. So uh, we're ready. All right. We've done quite a few theories anyway. So Shabazz, take it away. What have you got for us? So obviously the children aren't the first shape-shifting aliens we've seen. We obviously saw the Zygons in the Terror of Zygon in my dad's favourite era, the Tom Baker era. That's impossible. We have the power to turn ourselves into replicas of your unpleasant form. Whenever it is necessary. So the Doctor mentioned inventing, accidentally inventing tarmac in 1902. Now, that's not the first time the Doctor's invented something. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 11th Doctor invented the quadricycle. And the 10th Doctor invented the banana daiquiri in yep. 2006. Yes, it, it was. was. And that was the girl in the fireplace. God, they know how to party. Oh, look at what the cat dragged in, the oncoming storm. Mm, you sound just like your mother. What have you been doing? Where have you been? Well... Among other things, I think I just invented the banana daiquiri a couple of centuries early. Do you know, they've never even seen a banana before. Always take a banana to a party, Rose. Right, so when Rogue was scanning the doctors, I loved that bit when the doctors' faces all popped up. Uh, It was so nice to see, but we Mm -hmm. saw all the core doctors as well as the war doctor and the fugitive doctor. But we also saw Richard E. Grant's Mm. face pop up. Now, the thing is, he obviously voiced the Doctor in the 2003 animated series, The Scream of the Shalker. But he just voiced it, though. Mm. Mm. So are we saying that he's just the voice? Or I know, or is he something more? Because he played the great intelligence as well. He mm-hmm. did. And then also we've got the new Timeless Child sort of plot line. So there's so many faces of the Doctor that we could have never seen before. Yeah. So Richard E. Grant could definitely be a canon Doctor, yeah. It was Coming a nice back. kudos. Mm. It was, yeah, I loved that. 100%. I wish they'd thrown a few more in there. I wish they'd just yeah. randomly got someone off the street and just chucked them what, in and gone, you know the, what I mean? Oh, my yeah. face, yeah. Because there's a couple in like the classic Who series that are like two like Shadow Doctors that we've never seen before too. So I think by working with the Timeless Child plotline, it's interesting to see who we've never seen before and maybe get a chance to meet those doctors. So when Rogue grabs the doctor's hand and he's like, run, and the doctor's like, hey, that's my line. That obviously is a link back because yes. Nadia loves this. Love this. So this is the ninth doctor. It is. Uh, when he grabs Rose yeah. and uh, they escape the autons. And this is, I mean, yeah. Rose is my favourite companion. My favourite companion. <laughs> yeah. I love her. Has I my love heart. Her. Literally. Mm. So that's one of those episodes, a kudos to that. Yes. So the things that we keep seeing in older episodes that are coming back yeah. in the newer ones. And also, just to slightly touch on, because we've obviously had... Susan Twist come back. Mm. Let's just remind ourselves of where we've seen Susan Twist throughout this season. Everywhere I land, a woman appears. In every dream I'm there. She doesn't know why, but she remembered them. Doctor, there's something wrong. Whatever it is, here it comes. Oh my gosh. (laughs) It's cranking up there, isn't it? And Mel Bush is back. Something's cranking up. She's Um, again. She's almost innocent. Do you see what I mean? I feel like she she's has a no idea who she is. She doesn't know. Well, thanks for the Easter eggs. It's literally my favourite part. Um, mm-hmm. We are going into where in the Hooniverse next. So last week, all the theories from the fans was all about Ruby and her backstory. This week, we're, let's be honest, right? It's all about Susan Twist, mm-hmm. right? And it seems like Susan Twist is going to have a massive impact, right? Mm-hmm. And there was a theory online that said she seems to be playing different characters every time in that they're unrelated she also hasn't got a consistent agenda every time she appears. So she's either Clara 2.0 or she's someone pretending to be different people. Most likely it's one of the toy makers lot playing an elaborate and possibly metafictional game. Mm. What do we think? I, from that clip, it feels like you're saying she's not sure what's going on. 
And she talks about her dreams. So Ooh. I don't know if you remember the episode Amy's Choice. Oh, yeah. Where her dreams were like reality yeah. and whatever she dreamed. Like, you it's, know what I mean? So maybe it's something to do with that. So do you remember in uh, Christopher Eccleston's era when they go back to Satellite 5 mm -hmm. and there's the woman that's obviously plugged yes, into all those into TV the, yeah, shows? Yeah, 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 yeah. What if that is Susan, like Susan Twist is just being plugged into and broadcast across yeah. all these? But why? Could well be. Mm. Is but Ruby's like, fault? Like a projection. Ruby's like fault. A, yeah. I still think that she is there because Ruby has asked her somehow. There's an assistance. Like she's almost like a, I don't want to say guardian angel, but like she's there mm -hmm. helping Ruby to maybe stay on the right course rather than on the uh, the dark course if the other the half of her timeline. is the timeline. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, In exactly. the trailer though, she does say she's got a bit of sass with her because she's like, Doctor Who. Whereas in that clip, she's sort of like crying. Weird. And also, did you see another incarnation of Susan Twist's character? Yeah. It flashed yes. up, but it was sort of like a robotic mm. alien. Because she's been human. Majority that links to like, been, the, mm, like the face has been human. Said. But in that point, she it flashes and she's got this sort of alien-like. Yeah, she's... I need to watch it frame by frame. Yeah, 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 yeah we do. Someone good. give me the more. Such a frame yeah, by frame, girl. Do it on <laughs> two times slower. That's yeah. a good one, though. That's a great, great yeah theory. I've got another one. So... Uh, so there is a running theme of abandoned children mm. in this season. So I think, this is a user online, that it makes sense that Susan Foreman would make an appearance this season mm. as she was basically abandoned by the doctor and um, is his grandchild. Um, also, the one who waits could definitely be Susan Foreman as she has been waiting for the doctor to come back this whole mm. time. Mm. Maybe Absolutely. Susan Foreman is the villain of the series and is angry at being abandoned, sort of like an inverse of Ruby and the doctor who, though abandoned, were able to move on and find mm. family in yeah. there regardless. Do you know what I would love? Ooh. If Susan was the one that was whispering to everyone so that Ruby could get, you know, in, in yeah. um, 73 yards. Imagine it was Susan the whole time. That Same would stuff. Bring some stuff, yeah, so that yeah. she can be abandoned because she's like, well, you're with my granddad and I actually want my granddad so back. So the woman, the 73 to... yards woman was uh, Susan Foreman. I'm so just saying it would be nice if, his if his there granddaughter. was... granddaughter. Yeah, if yeah. that was his granddaughter. I, well, I've, I touched on that earlier, didn't I, where I said I think we're going to get references to the Doctor's own family mm. and try, trying to find his birth family. I don't, think she, I don't think she'd be a villain, but I think it could well be like a link to... As you say, yeah. Didn't when uh, when the doctor went back on Church and Ruby Road, and he had the 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 Ruby's mom. When he went back after Ruby had been taken and all that, the mom pointed at the hooded figure. I wouldn't say there's a mom, but the hooded figure pointed at the doctor, and the doctor almost was taken aback by it and mm, yeah. had tears rolling down his yeah. face. So is that not could that not be that link of him oh, yeah. his granddaughter could, pointing I, to him yeah. going, "You abandoner, you absolute yeah. abandoner." We could be saying here that Ruby could well be somehow... Oh, his this great could be granddaughter. Said his great granddaughter. Great granddaughter. Yeah. 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 You ever. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. I think Susan Fulham, because obviously the last thing he said to her was, I will be, I will come back. Yes. Yeah. And also he, in Devil's Court, it, I'm telling you, right, Russell T. Davies does not just randomly give us tidbits, right? Breadcrumbs. He's given us a whole biscuit at this point, right? I'm telling you, he, <laughs> looked, he pointed over and he turned around and said that that's where I, I lived with, that's where I currently yeah, yeah, yeah. live with my Love granddaughter that. right mm. and it was such a sweet moment because that first ever episode yeah. where you get to see the little the, the is it the garage child, and yeah. they're living in there and I, uh, it would be so nice I feel like this whole episode every time abandonment has come up as, an, as a as a talking point it's been quite resolved do you know like it was always about reassuring the babies that they're not like left you know like it's always been oh, trying wow. to reassure Ruby and yeah, it would yeah. be great if we could see that darker side of, well, sometimes there is resentment. Yes. Some yeah. people, when you're left, you are resentful. And how yeah. do we work through that as, a, as an course. emotion? Absolutely, it would be really Lauren. That deep, Lauren. wouldn't it? You are right, Lauren. Sometimes we plant seeds and we sow things that we don't realise are going to turn into beautiful flowers and mm. sometimes horrible mm. trees that have mangled. No, you're and, right. and I just would like it to be something that is almost retribution yes, like just a little yes, bit you told yeah. your granddaughter you were going to come back and you didn't yeah. I think it's the doctor I think the doctor <laughs> does need I think the doctor does get sometimes he does get his comp comeuppance in the sense that like sometimes things come back and they like really bite him in the backside yeah. but this is his ultimate biggest thing so I think I love that theory I genuinely love that and theory and might I think tie it's into brilliant. that beginning element that we were literally first served with with the butterfly that what you do exactly has, has an, an impact, effect yeah. and that you can't run from that so we love your theories remember to hashtag Doctor Who and we'll actually get to see them and we get to read them out
as Shabazz has said, we've had the tantalizing breadcrumbs to the point where it's a big old biscuit. Mm. We are ready. I have been waiting for this moment for all episode. <laughs> Russell T. Davis is about to give us a sneak breadcrumb about next week's episode. Mm. Are we ready? I am. Let's mm -hmm. go. So, right, hello, Nadia, Shabazz. This week, we're heading towards the end of the series and it is the legend of Ruby Sunday. As you can guess from that, things are coming to a head. Where does she come from? Why does it keep snowing? When she was left in the snow that day, what secrets were happening on Ruby Road? Who was there? That's the question. This is a monumental climax to the series. Units back. Gemma Redgrave is back in as Kate Lethbridge-Stewart. Uh, we've got Lenny Rush as the new scientific advisor at Unit. Bonnie Langford is back. Bonnie Langford is here as Mel at the doctor's side. Uh, Alexander Devriant as Colonel Ibrahim, Colonel Christopher Ibrahim. So it's, it's, you can feel the cast gathering. There's a great big uh, conglomeration of people heading towards a great big series climax. And it's the first part of a two-parter. That's how big things are getting. And if you want to know what's at stake, just go onto your iPlayer. Go and have a little look at The Giggle, where there's a very mysterious little conversation where, where Donna asked Mel what, what, what system they were using and was it static or dynamic. And Mel said that it's triad. A little line where she just says she's using the triad system watch that have consequences for everyone i Ooh. sorry I i'm russell does this, character i'm yeah. like <laughs> russell, does, <laughs> russell does this every week and this man has written the some of the best episodes are you genuinely telling me that he's gone and given us a tease and gone he's sending us down one place we're sat there right watching the episode frame by frame looking at triad triad what try i mean triad triad and right now something else comes and smacks in the face because it's something distracting else. us 100 percent mm. distraction i'm not believing it i've Sorry, decided Russell. <laughs> Sorry. that the psych my my power with the psychic earrings would be to look in russell t's brain oh yeah. my god yeah. can oh. you imagine i want yep. i want to know the future of all the, the doctor who yeah, yeah. Just what he's got planned up the there Whole yeah. series too. Now all that, right? Russell's given us a tease, but we want to actually see it for ourselves. We've got an exclusive sneak peek of the legend of Ruby Sunday. Right, look out for a triad, everybody. I'm, I'm... Oh, this is different. Where are they? I love seeing the TARDIS yeah, fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's current, new current, York. current, no current. This is UK. That's Unit now, isn't it? Unit's got a big building. Go protocols, everyone. Positions. Donna's daughter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, daughter. Yeah, Rose. TARDIS Vector One. What's uh, what in the Iron Man's going on here? <laughs> and why are they going in there? He knows how to make an entrance. Oh. That's not enough. Oh, that's, you that's have been a laugh. That's a joke. That's the teaser for the whole of the next two episodes. Are you having a laugh? All we saw, the, the doctor went to unit. Oh, yeah, bravo. Right, well, we knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Even oh I God. knew that was going to happen. Russell T. Davies told he us told that. Us. You know what I mean? I'm fuming. Oh, by the way, guess what happened? <gasps> Sneak peek. The doctor goes to unit. And you're Again? Not, you're, what? Wait. I am right. fully done. Never I'm going to go home and sleep tonight. Hang on, hang on. Let's take some bits from it, right? So you, I was saying to Shabazz when the clip was on, is that now? It looks a little bit more futuristic than 2024. No, it, it's, it's, it's no, straight units. It looks units, exactly yeah. the same as it did yeah, in, in um, the, the Giggle. Days. I know it's the future. The robots had a refresh as well. Kate's hair looks different. It's bleach blonde. <laughs> I am telling you that she skyline. Is blonde. She was blonde <laughs> Bleach yeah. was the correct word. Well, I said bleach She's blonde. been to she's the hair oh, right, so she's had, bleach. It's been a week she's had a hair, a hair appointment, right? I'm telling right. you. Literally, the bleach was refreshed. Is by the bleach was refreshed, exactly. fair enough. Nothing is by accident. How much? How far are you saying? I say two or three years. Two years, I say nine months. Yeah, a couple of months. All right, yeah, fine. I'm going to say a couple of months. I agree with you that now saying that because looking at links has obviously been refreshed, but I don't think. No, I don't think it's too far in the future. The only, my only thing is, why are we rushing to unit? Like That's something's saying, happened when you're rushing to unit. That's why I think it's there. been a couple of years. So maybe something's happened that they need mm. to come and fix now because now they realise that. But are, they, are we then going to see that a couple of years? Because if it is a couple of years, I'm not having it. Okay. I don't, like, don't like that. All right, guys, my brain is broken. <laughs> and we could be arguing all day long about this, but it's so good to get everyone's like insights. Oh, Gets God. a bit spicy, doesn't it? And you can find more behind the scenes content about Doctor Who on the Doctor Who socials. And that's it. This is wrapped up. Thank you so Great. much for coming. Oh, Thank thanks you for, for having, having us. This is so yeah. fun. It's been an honour. Who crew and everyone, let's give a massive round of applause to Ellie and Lauren. Thank you. Thank you. You guys were great. Thank you so much for joining us. And that is it. Now, remember to join us as soon as you finish watching the next episode, The Legend of Ruby Sunday. We'll still be here. We might not be friends, but we'll still be here because, wow. Like, <laughs> but the good thing is we're going to finally know. 
I need the I answers. I can't wait. All right, make sure you come back, guys. Bye. Bye. Don't forget to click below to subscribe to the official Doctor Who YouTube channel.